Illuminati card game was published in 1994. It has predicted events like 9-11. The game consists of more than 400 cards, only 10 of which are New World Order cards. This is the first set of the cards. Blue means initiation, yellow means progress, red means stop. The theme of this set is the rich gets richer, the poor gets poorer. Indeed, we have been seeing these images in real life. This is the second set. Familiar? The theme of this set is violent resistance and suppression. I don't believe that people should be able to own guns. And the last set. We have not experienced these images yet. This set suggests that there will be first energy crisis, then World War III, and post-war anarchism. After all these events will be New World Order, as indicated by the final red card, Peace in Our Time. Now, energy crisis may be imminent. First, the US and Europe imposed sanctions against Russia, which have been significantly affecting the oil production. As for the gas, Russia has cut the gas supply to Ukraine, and warned that the European countries will face gas cutoffs if they re-export the Russian gas to Ukraine. In fact, Russia has already cut gas exports to Poland before because Poland supplied the gas to Ukraine. And the Russian gas exports to some Central European countries are continuously declining. Second, the oil productions in the Middle Eastern countries are unstable. The US launched air strikes against ISIS-controlled oil refineries, which of course will contribute to the imminent energy crisis. One should note that the amount of the oil controlled by ISIS is not small. And the US and its allies will continue to destroy more and more ISIS-controlled oil fields, rather than securing them. A former BP chief warned that the oil prices may significantly increase due to Western sanctions against Russia, coupled with instability in Middle Eastern countries. At some point this year, the Western governments will be forced to reserve the oil, and the oil will become unavailable to the public because of the aforementioned factors. Before I explain my numerological theories, let's first listen to what others have been saying. In 2009, a psychic predicted World War III to be in 2014. Answer this is the Earth civilization the way it was in the early 1900s, the same right now. You know it's fun. Well, tell me what happened. Just tell us what happened. You don't have to feel the emotions. Just tell us logically, scientifically what happened. Nuclear war. You know that. You don't have to feel any emotions. So what happened after the nuclear war? Talk to me. Which year, which year was the nuclear war? There you go. Kind of strange for Bombay, since Bombay doesn't exist. But Don't we have central planes? Don't we have s s central locations? Which year was the nuclear war? In the Earth. What was the year of the nuclear war?
What was the year of the nuclear war? Tell us. You don't have to feel it. Just tell us. You don't have to feel the emotion. You can just tell us and talk to us. What was the year? Just tell us in words right now. now? What are people doing right now? And what do you do right now? What do you do in your life right now? I'm in a central station right now. This is where I perform all my tasks. Where is central station located? Where is central station? Metro building. Metro plaza. What city or state is that in? Or country? We're in section sector 17. And who is there with you? Who is there with you? Who is in the sector with you? All the technicians. Which country dropped the nuclear bomb on which country? Like, how did that happen in 2014? You just said in 2014 the nuclear war happened, right? How did that happen? What is the story? You really want to know? Yeah, you don't have to feel any emotion. Just tell me in like a short, brief. I'm sure you have the data there. And I'm sure you're smart enough to know. But China is a very dangerous country back then. Nobody took them seriously. Things happen when Chairman Mao, does that ring a bell to you? Died? Who took over? Massive nuclear war. The word red mean anything to you? Note that the psychic predicted the fact that the world's focus is not on China. It is on Russia and ISIS, despite the ongoing international conflict between China and the U.S. over South China Sea. Impending scenario in which, like the domino effect, governments around the world of Islam, they will claim, are now going to fall. And the world of Islam is rising up now. And one-eyed Muslims, of course, are going to believe it. The world of Islam is now going to rise up and all these governments are going to be swept away. And authentic governments representing the Muslim masses will now emerge. And therefore the Jews are going to have their throats cut. This is going to be the most dangerous dangerous moment in the entire life of the world of Jews the media will portray it if we don't do something we will all be slaughtered by these Muslim fanatics yeah. I tell you this will be drama worthy of Hollywood when it comes <laughs> huh? they must be hating me now for revealing their secrets. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm out of energy. <laughs> well, I'm glad that our viewing audience uh, in different parts of the world 
would have this opportunity for me to share with them my views on ISIS, which is a Zionist-created entity. Uh, so you could deceive mankind and deceive the Muslims with a bogus caliphate. Um, that the the listening audience and viewing audience around the world would have a chance to understand the great war which is coming. And it is so sad that the world of Islamic scholarships speaks nothing about it. No. <laughs> they don't even know about it. The great war is around the corner. It's coming. And uh, our viewing audience would now know for the first time that the great war or Armageddon or the Balhaba will be fought for the mountain of gold. That's why it will be fought. The mountain of gold symbolizing the petrodollar monetary system. The desire is need to maintain their control over the world. And that 99 out of every 100 will be killed will be those who are fighting for the gold. Those who are fighting to preserve the monetary system and those who are opposing the control of the Zionists over the monetary system. Two o'clock, it's saying five past two. It's saying, it is saying a few minutes to ten. Well, you're right. I can read the Arab numbers, but it's backwards. That's right. <laughs> because, <laughs> because this one goes anti-clockwise. Yes. Well, and that one goes clockwise. Yes. <laughs> well. So this is anti-systemic. Good. That's what we need. <laughs> this is anti-systemic, yeah. And that one is systemic. And we don't want to be systemic. No, not at all. We're in a to... world controlled by Dajjal. We want to be anti-systemic. Even the Pope believes we are headed for World War III. Pope Francis celebrated Mass on a rainy Saturday morning. During his homily, he denounced the real causes of wars and conflicts. La cupidigia, l'intolleranza, l'ambizione al potere sono motivi che spingono avanti la decisione bellica. E questi motivi sono spesso giustificati da un'ideologia. L'ideologia è una giustificazione. E quando non c'è un'ideologia, c'è la risposta di Caino. A me che importa? Referring to all the late soldiers buried there, the Pope explained that all their dreams and hopes were destroyed by war. He also added that the real culprits of war, just like Cain, didn't care. Given the rise of so many wars and conflicts in Iraq, Syria, Ukraine, Gaza, and parts of Africa, the Pope said a third world war isn't far-fetched. Anche oggi, dopo il secondo fallimento di un'altra guerra mondiale, forse si più parlare di una terza guerra combattuta a pezzi, con crimini, massacri, distruzioni. Come è possibile questo? È possibile perché anche oggi, dietro le quinte, ci sono interessi, piani geopolitici, avidità di denaro e di potere. C'è l'industria delle armi. Uh, right now, with the situation in ISIS, how do you break it down? What's your understanding of it? Well, <laughs> world wars change worlds. And if you have a global agenda, then global problems allow you to offer global solutions. And if you look how the world was transformed by the First World War and the Second World War, the world was a completely different place after both of those wars. and. The idea all along has been to have a third world war to complete the transformation into a global state with a world government and a world army um, dictating to the global population. And there was a, a letter, a controversial letter, because 
uh, people uh, d dismiss it. But with the passage of events, it becomes more and more credible. And it was a letter written by a man called Albert Pike, who was a massive, massive Freemason in uh, the United States in the 19th century. And it was to uh, uh, another Illuminati infamous character called Mazzini, Giuseppe Mazzini. And it detailed three world wars that would transform global society. And uh, the first one described it in the terms that happened. Uh, the second one it described in terms that, that it happened. But, uh, you know, you can say, well, it came to light later. So, you know, maybe they just put that in and fake the accuracy of the first two wars. So the, the credibility of what it said lies in what it said about the Third World War. And it talked about creating a conflict between the Muslim world and what it called political Zionism. And people will say, well, that's got to be a fake because there was no Zionism when that letter was supposed to be written. Well, this is an agenda that's projected a long way forward. This is why uh, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World, and um, Eric Blair, George Orwell, um, 1984, who knew each other, Huxley uh, taught um, George Orwell uh, French at Eton College, where the royals go, and they knew each other and, and they became friends. And from the same sources, not least the Fabian Society in Britain, they uh, understood the projected agenda. And we're talking there in uh, 1932 that Huxley's book was published, 1948 that uh, Orwell's book was published, and, and, and they are um, describing the society that's unfolding today at that time. And there are many, many other examples of people predicting the future who were insiders who, who tur have turned out to be incredibly accurate. Um, so the idea that um, Albert Pike would know that this Zionist movement was coming and the, 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 the establishment of Israel was coming um, is very credible when you look at the, the, the background evidence. And of course, Zionism was established not that long after this letter was supposed to be written. And so he was talking about the Muslim world being brought into a war with the um, political Zionism, what today we call Israel, and that this would, you know, in my terms, create a vortex that would draw in the world, um, in, in, in our terms, America, the European Union, NATO, uh, into, uh, into this war. And what you uh, have um, now is a situation that this ISIS group has come out of nowhere, in effect, incredibly well armed, um, incredibly funded. I mean, I've seen figures like two billion dollars at its disposal. And it's walking into, into towns um, in, 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 um, in Iraq and taking them over. It's established itself at the key border crossings into Syria and into uh, Jordan. And it's all happened really fast. And what um, the potential of this uh, clearly is, is to do what um, Pike was talking about. Because the vortex David Knight mentioned is becoming prominent. More than 50 countries have joined the fight against ISIS. This now includes Russia. And China. A professor from a Chinese military university said that World War III is becoming more of a reality and China needs to take action. In addition, top financial experts agree that World War III is inevitable. Well, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, as you can tell, I, I do as I'm told. And I thought I had to stand up at the time when my immediate predecessor would sit down. And uh, clearly, I failed. Um, <laughs> Good afternoon and thank you very much for having me uh, with you. I would like to thank the National uh, Press Club and especially President Angela Grilling-Keen 
for not only inviting me to this prestigious venue, but essentially presenting the outline of what I want to talk to you about now. So it's as if we had prepared that together, which we have not. Now let me first of all, of course, begin by wishing you all a Happy New Year. I guess it's still time to do that, given that we are just exactly halfway through between our Western uh, New Year and the Lunar New Year, which will loom in a few weeks' time. I think it's also appropriate to wish ourselves a Happy New Year, given what I would like to talk to you about, which has to do with uh, the global economy and what we should expect for 2014. Now, I'm going to test you um, numerology skills by asking you to think about the magic seven. Okay? Most of you will know that seven is quite a number in all sorts of themes, religions, and uh, I'm sure that you can compress numbers as well. So, if we think about 2014, all right, I'll, I'm just giving you 2014, you drop the zero, 14, two times seven. Okay, that's just by way of example, and we're going to carry on. So 2014 will be a milestone and hopefully a magic year in many respects. It will mark the 100th anniversary of the First World War back in 1914. It will mark the 70th anniversary, 70th anniversary, drop the zero, seven, <laughs> of the Bretton Woods Conference that actually gave birth to the IMF. And it will be the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, 25th. Okay. It will also mark the seventh anniversary of the financial market jitters that quickly turned into the greatest global economic calamity since the Great Depression. The crisis still lingers. Yet, optimism is in the air. We've left the deep freeze behind us and the horizon looks just a bit brighter. So my hope and my wish for 2014 is that after those seven miserable years, weak and fragile, we have seven strong years. Now, I don't know whether the G7 will have anything to do with it <laughs> or whether it will be the G20. I certainly hope that the IMF will have something to do with it. Now, is this wishful thinking? <laughs> 